So, aha, I think we are live. So let's chat. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> morning and welcome to another in interview of Let's Chat. Uh, I'm Lisa and the theme for this week is Kite Me In. Uh, today we've got Elric, who will be here all week with me doing his techie stuff and doing any questions that are needed. And we also have Margie who is going to from Litter Brigade from Dine and Dyser, who will be speaking about what her group has been doing during lockdown and how it all started. Um, can I just say that, you know, if you had a, a click captions button in the video for subtitles, um, it might, because sometimes we've been like going a wee bit, you know, off kind of thing with the sound at the moment. So hopefully that hopefully today's interview will go fine and hopefully I don't lose connection again like yesterday. Fingers <laughs> yes, fingers crossed, no connection loss. <laughs> so Margie, would you like to tell us a little bit about the Litter Picker Brigade? Yeah, well this was started around about three months ago and it was actually a guy called Alan Caldercock who started it. He was walking along the beach one night and he just happened to notice how much rubbish there was about, but it was kind of getting a wee bit dark. He didn't have any picker, he didn't have a bath with him. So um, he thought, oh, I'm going to do something about this. So the following week, he just put a little post on Facebook saying, eh, I'm going litter picking tonight. Anybody fancy joining me? And I thought, oh, Tuesday night, I'm not doing anything, I'll go. So um, I went and one of uh, Ali's other pals, Andrew, went. So the three of us had some bags, we had gloves. We walked along uh, through Dysart Harbour, um, down onto the beach, eventually as far as Path Head, picked up a fair wee bit of rubbish. Um, um, we were kind of wondering where we were going to put it. So on the way back, we just managed to put stuff in the bins at the park. So the next week, Ali put another post on when litter picking. And the, it, it was absolutely phenomenal the second week. The amount of people that turned up was really, really good. And a guy, Jeremy, from Five Countryside Trust had noticed it as well. So he came down and he brought um, litter pickers and a first aid kit. And uh, by then I'd managed to get a donation of some bags. So we gave out the litter pickers, the bags. Um, people then tended to find their own wee area that they wanted to go into. Yeah. Um, Ali and I, we just kept on, on walking along the beach area and I mean, the amount of stuff we've picked up, uh, and at the moment, it, it's like face masks. I really wish that people would um, not use disposable ones, that they would use cloth ones, because um, they're discarding them. And for the wildlife, they're really not good, you know, because you've got the wee ear straps, and they get caught around a bird's neck or, or whatever. Um, yeah. Really very good. And, oh, the usual assortment of plastic, and paper bags and um, there's this drink at the moment that seems to be popular. I think it's called Dragon Soup. Mm -hmm. So we started yeah. trying. So Ali and I were having a little competition to see how many tins, empty tins of Dragon Soup we could pick up on an evening. Um, so after that, we then got a group joining us. Um, the YMCA B4 Youth Club and oh there's sometimes a dozen of them and they come every week and they are so enthusiastic and they've adopted the Bowling Green at Ravenscraig Park and that is their area. They all go mm. up there because I think there's a lot of people go in and, and use it and have barbecues uh, and unfortunately, as is the nature of people, they don't clear up after them. So um, they go up and do that. So last night, um, a group of them went up and took like a, a bucket and a brush 
to try and sweep up the glass because there have been a lot of problems with broken glass. Wow. So you managed to get your people involved then? Yes. Yeah, so um, Ali's boss, um, Ian Johnson, from Ian Johnson Funerals, he has just donated um, some litter pickers as well. Um, I got in touch with uh, Ian Cameron a couple of months ago. There was some people who were wanting to clean up the streets in Dyser. And I have a bit of a problem with that because people are employed by the council to clean up the streets. Uh, and you've got this sort of fine line between volunteering and paid employment. Mm -hmm. So I got in touch with uh, one of the local councillors, Ian Cameron, and you know I said, look, you know, is there a, 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 a sweep, a, a street cleaner in Dyser? And it, it turns out that no, there's not. There was one up until a couple of years ago, but um, he, he unfortunately passed away and he's never been replaced. Uh, and at the moment, I think they've just got a couple of guys who are um, going around emptying bins uh, uh, and that's it. So um, uh, the plan is to get somebody back cleaning the streets. But obviously him and the council would be very grateful for any way that we could stand in at the moment. So anyway, as the weeks have gone on, the, the litter pickers tend to break. You, you get two types. Uh, and I was, in, I was fortunately given one by somebody. It's a really, really good one. But the other ones with the kind of like grabby claws, you just need to kind of hit them off the ground in the break. So as the weeks have gone on, a lot of them have been breaking. So I got back in touch with uh, Ian Cameron yesterday, you know, and I explained some of the areas of Dyser that the streets were getting cleaned and could he provide some good litter pickers and some bags. And I don't know if you'll just permit me to maybe, I got a reply back from him. Um, this morning, uh, if I could just find it here and if it's okay to to read it out to you, which I thought was really quite helpful. I'm, I, need, I need to mute my mic because there's a bit of feedback and there's actually, uh, the bead's being picked up just outside my house, so it's going to be really noisy, so I'll be on mute for a bit. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I got a, a, a reply from um, Ian Cameron this morning and uh, they're looking to employ somebody two and a half days a week. Uh, he was wanting a bit more detail about the areas that we clean and about the areas that are, are particularly bad in Dyser. And uh, he said, yes, he will uh, provide litter pickers and he will provide bags. In fact, he's even offered to drop them off at my house. So I think that's a win-win situation. It is. So, yes, yeah, so I was really quite, uh, really quite um, pleased about that. Oh. So did you ever see the, I was on the Five Council website this week, looking up about, you know, litter picking and environment stuff. And so you never actually saw the meet up and clean up thing that they had on their page, which I think was mentioned back in July. Uh, and no, it, was about, it was about community groups. Is that's that, not the Fife Championship one. No, this is on Fife Council website. Right. Where they offer help. You know, they're, they're asking for the communities. It doesn't matter, you know, it could be Glen Rothers, it could be Garden Den, anywhere. And, you know, it's like little groups like yourself, who are willing right. to go out and do this and they offer extra like I think it's they give extra like uh, litter pickers and if you oh, contact them they'll come and collect the, the rubbish that you've done for that day kind of thing if you tell oh, them where it is. All right no I haven't but just on the subject of collecting rubbish and um, the guy Jeremy from the Five Countryside Trust um, there's certain bins around Dyser 
that are um, belong to five countryside trust. And when we litter pick, we leave them at the bins and he gets them picked up the next morning. However, uh -huh. one of the women from Dyser, um, Trish Boyd, uh, I'm sorry, I've just kind of, I've lost, I've just lost you for the moment. Can you still hear me? Oh, yes, yeah, still, still hear yeah. well, Trish Boyd, uh, she goes out like litter picking most days and has got speaking to the guys that work in Ravenscraig Park and they seemingly pick up the rubbish on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday, which fits in beautifully with us. Uh, so we can now leave bags at the, the bins at the park as well and they'll get picked up. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's, um, that's, yeah. that's quite good. Because as I say, the first week, we didn't know what we were going to do because I think going back to that time, our own litter bins weren't getting picked up as frequently, so we couldn't really bring them home. Um, but as I say, it's that's that's that problem's been solved now. Yeah. Do you uh, feel like I, there's been more community spirit within oh, the area because of this group? Yeah, and and do you know it's a really nice group, and people will all meet up at the, the car park. Ali will give out the litter pickers, bags, whatever people are needing. And we all set off in, in little groups, you know, twos and threes, and go to our own little areas. And, you know, you get some really nice chat along the way. Um, uh -huh. So it, it is, it's very social. Uh, uh, and as I say, I'm so happy to see all these youngsters there. Um, yes, I was going to mention the, that. The fourth Youth Club. I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and we've actually got one guy who's doing his Duke of Edinburgh award. So he does voluntary work as part of it. So he comes along as well. So, do you know, everybody's there. Just, you know, um, it's, really just a nice, it's just a really nice social group. I mean, Ali's early 30s. Um, you know, and a young guy, and you think this is all sprung from him, from the night he was walking along the beach. So I think, you know, fair play to him. He would have been here today, but um, he's, he's working, so obviously. So uh, yeah. I, I said I would, I would do it on behalf of the group. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh. I, I was actually amazed by the uh, posts where the teenagers have got involved in everything because a mum had from the area had sent me a link to join the group because oh, right. I because I'm sort of like in that area right. Right. and um I was shocked because these are kids that I've seen grow up through dies at primary and everything and them going out and helping you know they're right. not doing other stuff they're willing to go out and help their own community do this kind of work <laughs> and everything um, we've even had, I mean, Ali's daughter, Amelia Ann, she was coming along most weeks and we'd had some other really young kids and they were really enjoying it. I think they like the thrill of the litter pickers and, and oh, there's rubbish, I'm going to get this bit and oh, look, you get that bit and, and it was kind of like a game. Um, yeah. These these kids were probably between six and eight years old. And uh, now that the school's back, it's not, you know, we're, we're not getting them, but that's that's fine, that's great. But you, you just hope that these kids will get the ethos. If they see uh, one of their friends drop them a bit of litter in the playground, they'll say to them, oh, look, you know, you really shouldn't uh, drop the litter, stuff like that. You know, I, I mean, I, I think it's really nice to walk around Dyson and see the streets clean. Because um, mm -hmm. I, I do a bit usually when I'm going down, it's a bit on Hill Street between Hill Street and Quality Street. Um, there's no yeah. houses there. Uh, so it, but it's an area leading up to the primary school. <clears throat> and I've noticed quite a big increase um, in litter since the schools went back. You know, if I was cleaning it once every couple of weeks before, it was fine. But now I do it one day and then a couple of days later, you think, mm, you know. Um, I, think, 
That's quite oh, interesting. What you're saying about the fact that there's uh, a lot of uh, face masks that are uh, like ending up washed up everywhere. So uh, that, that's something that I might want to talk a bit more about to actually make sure uh, people actually dispose of them safely, actually. That... <coughs> yeah, B because that's, that's the thing as well. You know, they're, they're getting dropped and people may have been worn that, wearing them. Uh, and I mean, as, as well as um, the coronavirus, you've got no idea what other things might be harboured in the mask, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, yeah, there's that side of it, but for me, it's more about um, wildlife, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there was just, a lot about, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> just, just, I don't know what made this spring into my mind, but there was one day we were on Pathhead Beach and we were just walking along, clearing it up, and we found a pair of socks, found a towel. And then the <laughs> next thing, Ali pointed to the tree, there was a pair of uh, y fronts hanging on the tree as well. So. <laughs> The need for that. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like, things you think. Yes, the things that you find. Uh, uh, as I say, so it's things like plastic and stuff for me that, I, um, you know, uh, and the amount of people, I've got two dogs and I pick up after them and I have my wee plastic bag and then I find a bin and I put it in. But the amount of people that are picking up their dog waste and then chucking the plastic bag into uh, uh, just on the side, mm -hmm. it's like you'd be as well leaving it, you know, for the rain to wash it away or 10 people to stand in it than putting it in a bag and throwing it away. Um, you know, because most of the bags are these black ones that don't rot down. And I use the, the 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 biodegradable ones. Ah, the dark uh, green ones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 The, uh, I was also uh, saying that there's been a lot more people talking about wildlife uh, because there's been the lockdown. A lot of people didn't travel, and there was not as much traffic, so there was a lot of. Uh, I saw it on on posts in in Fife everywhere. Loads of people on the coastal path. Uh, saying about the, there's birds that we've not seen in ages, there was a lot more wildlife. So uh, I think it's really good that actually someone is taking care as well. It's like <laughs> we need to clear out all this mess we're generating. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's these, um, you know, the plastic you get around the likes of beer cans and things like that, you know, the, the, the sort of circle bits, the things that the, the damage that that can do to. Wild yeah, wild. people oh, just don't design. No, people just cut it up before they dispose of it. Um, you know that that would that would help as well. Um, but especially maybe sort of a month ago when the weather was quite good and it was really light at night and there was quite a lot of people out in the park. Um, you know, we would meet groups of people and they'd be sitting having a juice or a, a tin of beer or whatever, and we'd pass them. And we say, it's okay, we'll, we'll dispose of our rubbish in the bin. We're not going to leave it lying here. <laughs> Great, excellent. Yeah. You know. they've, heard about, they've heard about you now, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, as I say, Tr Trish had uh, been in, in the park and there was somebody who was walking from Clyde Bank to Dundee and was wild camping. <sighs> And they set up their tent in, in Ravenscraig Park. Uh, so Trish had got talking to the guy. They would tell him, I don't know why he was walking from Clyde Bank to Dundee, but hey ho, he was. And uh, so, you know, just before she left, she says, Well, look, you know, I hope you'll take all your rubbish away and, you know, not leave anything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we passed the bit where he'd been camping. And was you would never know that his tent had been there. So good on him, whoever he is. Do you feel um since we came out of lockdown, sort of, uh, that the letter has got worse, kind of thing? Because on social media, I was noticing places, uh, 
like when KFC and McDonald's got opened up, that they used to, that rubbish was getting left everywhere and nobody was going to clean it up, you know, and they were putting blame on each other, you know, it was the public, they caused this, they should know how to use a bin or anything. Yeah. So do you feel uh, like it has got worse and groups like um, have had to step in and thought, you know, and help kind of thing? I, I, I would say to a certain extent, yes, but when, you know, maybe about sort of May, June time, before things started opening up, there was a lot of people, go, uh, after one particularly good weekend, the amount of barbecues and things we found down on the beach was unbelievable. It was, it, it, it was, it was just, it, it was incredible, the amount of rubbish. And there's a bit where you go from Ravenscraig Park down to Pathhead Sands, down the stairs, and there's a hole in the wall. Well, it was like the world and their granny had been shoving every bit of rubbish into this hole. Because the um, Ali, he he would go down, jump in the hole, and turf the stuff out. And Amelia and his daughter and I, we would get it all into bags and stuff. It was unbelievable. So I I I, I don't really know if there's more rubbish just now or I. I can't really decide, but there definitely is an increase in McDonald's KFC rubbish. Uh, and you don't know whether it's people discarding it or whether it's down to seagulls as well. Yeah. You know, because that's quite a problem. Um, you know, seagulls emptying the bins. Uh, so I, I just, yeah, you know, it's just like, People should just just go and know, just go and know. Do that. Take your letter home with you, or find a bin to put it in. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not rocket science. No, it's but you know we've, we've got to there, respect where we live and everything. Yeah, yeah. Is there is there days where you actually do cleanups where people can come in, or is it you, you do it more like you, you respond to what's happening, or it depends on uh who is free or because i'm sure some people would be really interested in, in in doing things like that so uh do you have set days where they can actually come and see and help out or well i, I mean our litter picker picking group um is, is a tuesday night uh, and be, because the nights are getting darker we've moved it from seven o'clock to six o'clock we meet in Dyser, um Harbour Car Park, uh, um, or as we'd say, <clears throat> around about six o'clock. And we've always got bags and pickers and, and stuff like that for, for people uh, for people to use. So, But there's also um, five street champions. Uh, yes, yes. I was at a litter pick on Sunday down Seafield Beach. And the amount of wet wipes was incredible. I think people are flushing wet wipes away. Uh, and then, of course, it's going through the system. Um, it's getting caught in all the seaweed and getting washed back up on the beach. And we got an area, probably about, I don't know, maybe about four metres squared. We filled three bags that was almost entirely from wet wipes. It was unbelievable. You know, um, yeah, I think people just think it's an easy option to flush them away. But I mean, that's obviously causing problems with marine life and things as well. Yeah. But I yeah. believe there's over a, a thousand people in Fife are now um, into, you know, doing litter picking. That's the ones that we know about. Then you'll also get the other people who will just randomly pick up stuff as well. So, I, I mean, I think it's, it's maybe it's one of the good things that's come out of a lockdown. People maybe being more aware of their surroundings and mm -hmm. hopefully they'll keep taking care of their surroundings and, you know, kind of spread the message. Look, 
you know, walk an extra 10 feet if you can and put it in the bin or, or stick it in your pocket or keep it in your hand till you get home. Definitely <laughs> interesting to hear that, I think. Uh, I'm going to share the, I think it's your logo, uh, I think, this one here. <laughs> Who's dropping all of it? Uh, I think it's a really good question that you have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Who's doing this? I mean, come on. So, uh, yeah. So, what's the best way for for folk to be, be in touch with you? Is it is it mainly through Facebook? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's the the Litter Picker Brigade on Facebook. Um, yeah, we, we, we've got a page set up uh, and we're always on a Tuesday, Ali will put up a post saying we're meeting tonight at six o'clock, blah, 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 whatever. And as I say, there's the, I think it's Fife Street Champions as well. And they, they tend to do litter picks at different different areas through Fife. Uh, but Trish and I went down to um, Seafield one on Sunday because it was it was nearby. And, and I mean, it's an absolutely beautiful day, and there must have been about thirty people turned up. It was really, it was, it was really quite heartening. And, and it's really nice if people are walking along and they're actually saying to you, "Look, you're doing a good job," and, and then you hope that that just kind of goes in their mind. Well, I'm not going to drop litter. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I know that over the years there has been a lot of um, litter picking up at that area, Seafield. Yeah. Because um, I think there was a barbers in the high street that organised it one year and helped out and everything. Yeah. You know, and you do hear how so many people actually think about going along and helping. You know, you know they're giving up their time to make yeah. sure that their community is looking good for others and yeah. you know for themselves as well kind of thing yeah. no. I, I think it, it's all about taking a bit of pride in your neighborhood and, and i think if people do that it does develop a bit of more of community spirit you know it, it's like a, a slightly different but i don't know you know during lockdown i think i've got to know my neighbors better and you, you know we'll have more of a social chat when we're meeting you know in the cul-de-sac or or wherever and people neighbors are helping each other more there's something uh, about that i think uh i i've, I've, I've taken part in in Peter Peaks as well and spending a day out when you, you're working with uh folk and you, you you're cleaning things as you're walking and you walk together yeah. and and if it's a nice day, brilliant. Sometimes it's raining, but it doesn't really yes. matter. <laughs> it's it, it's it's walking together and, and just you're doing something good for everyone at the same time. And, and yeah. it's really good when that yeah. happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's really good thing. Yeah. You get to know people uh, and, you know, you, you, you have a chat uh, and it, sometimes it ends up it's just Ali and I. Uh, and I used to work in a, a laboratory that was associated with the mortuary and um, Ali's an undertaker. So we, we have really interesting chats about work things and, uh, and you know, it, it's just it's just a really nice way to spend an evening. And as you say, you're walking along, picking up rubbish on the way. So, you know, what's not to like about it, especially if it's uh, the sun shining. Highly recommended. We'll, we'll, we'll send loads of people your way. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> well, every, everybody's welcome. And, you know, you, you can spend as little or as much time as you want. We'll all go our own ways. Some people like to do the streets and dives up. I prefer, like, to the beach and, and the park or whatever. And then when we come back, there's various bins where you can leave your bag of rubbish. And if it's a borrowed litter picker, you just leave it under Ali's car. And he picks it up when he gets back. So it's just, yeah. You know, right. so if you put 10 minutes, an hour and a half, whatever, six o'clock, dies at car park at, down at the harbour. That's brilliant. Excellent. Well, that's us coming to an end of another Let's Chat interview. So I want to thank Maggie for coming along this morning discussing her group that's been going out there doing the litter picking in the Dyser area. 
I'd also like to thank all other groups around Fife that do similar jobs, you know, because people just need to think a bit in, about the environment and how it affects everybody. Um, tomorrow we have, no, sorry, not tomorrow, this afternoon. It's a busy day today. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we've, got an, we've got another Let's Chat interview this afternoon at 2 p.m. with Bragg Enterprises. So please come back to Diversity Week 5 on Facebook. And after Bragg interviews, we have live music from Jackson also at 4 p.m. So thank you for being involved today. Thank you, Maggie, again for coming along. Thank you for the invite. Great. <laughs> we'll see you in Dice Out one afternoon. It'll be really fantastic. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. We <laughs> That's great stuff. Thank you okay, again. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Enjoy your morning. Bye.